Welcome to your first solids review video for exam one, problem number one. What do we have? We have a problem on stress. I've got a blue bell crank here, thanks to my niece for the wonderful drawing, hey? Isn't that good? So this is like a side view of the thing. It's got one force at an angle over here. It's got another force on a bracket up here at the top. And it's got a pin connection here. Look how lovely her pin is. The pin connection here is this side view of that pin. So this is a, uh, it's a uh, double, it's got a bracket on either side of it. So I've got one on either side and then the pin goes through the middle like that. And then of course the bracket is right in the center of this, right? So if the bracket tears through, it's got to tear through the pin how many times? This is a double shear problem, isn't it? So this problem says for pin B, right? What is the diameter of the pin? Diameter. And what do they give us here? They give us the allowable shear stress of the pin. They give us the bearing stress. What is bearing stress? Remember, bearing stress is the, is the force on the pin divided by the area that it, the, pin, the, the, the pin there is pressing on. Okay, so the cross-sectional projected area. Okay, and we'll do that here in a second. And it says, here's the bearing stress for the bracket, and here's the bearing stress for the support down here on the bottom, right? So we've got a lot of things that could be limiting the diameter of the pin, and let's see if we can find the diameter of that pin, okay? So we're gonna start off with this, like all good statics problems, okay? With a free body diagram, okay? So here's the pin, okay? Uh, pin B is here, all right? And what do we have on this guy? We have a force up here, this is F1, and then we've got this force over here, which is at 60 degrees, okay, 60 degrees, uh, and to P, which is 8 kilonewtons, 8 kilonewtons, okay, and so let's see, this guy up here, he's from the 60s, peace sign, <laughs> okay, 60, and this guy down here, P cos. 60. And then what's going on here at the pin? What's the pin connection look like? It's got an X and a Y. Uh, this is to the right. This is to the right. And so this needs to be to the left. There's my BX. And since that's down, this has to be up. There's my BY. Okay. So we need to find F1. So let's do a moment at B. What do you think? Summing the moments at point B. Right, from here, what do I get? Let's see the P cos. Watch out. He goes through point B. That's cha cha force knocked out. The P sine 60 rotates me. Which way is that? Counterclockwise. That's positive. So 8 times the sine of 60 times how far away, right? What's this distance over here? The force in the Y. So the distance in the X is 180 millimeters, okay? And then I've got F1, which rotates me negative, minus F1 times how far away is that guy? 250 mm's, okay? You might be tempted to convert these into meters. It's not necessary because they're gonna divide away anyway. That unit will divide out. Okay, so let's see what we get here. Clear, clear. All right, I'm in, uh, let's see, 8 times the sine of 60, all right, and then, let's see, times 180 equals, and then divided by 250 is 4.988, can we call it 5? F1 equals 5 kilonewtons, okay? 4.988, I, I call that five, okay? So if this guy is five kilonewtons, then what is uh, By? Well, By, who's he equal to? He's gotta be equal to that guy, it's the only guy going downhill. So P sine 60 is what? Eight times 0.866 is uh, 6.928. 6.93 kilonewtons, okay? 
and bx, what's bx equal to? bx is equal to that guy plus that guy, right? So 4.988 plus, what is that guy? 8 cosine 60 times 0.5, right? Is 8.988 or 9 kilo newtons, okay? So there's the force on my pin. There's the force F1. Now I want the complete amount of force that's trying to tear that pin in half. I don't need it in component form because some of the force is in the Y, some of the force is in the X, but how much is the total force? Well, that's pretty easy, isn't it? That's 6.93 squared plus nine squared square root, right? That gives me the magnitude of the X and the Y, right? So let's see, squared plus 6.93 squared equals second square root, second answer equals 11.35 kilonewtons, okay? That is the total force on the pin, okay? Now what is the area of the pin? The area of the pin is this. It's pi times r squared, or we can use the diameter equation, which is pi d squared, okay, divided by four. Okay, so let's use this guy. Since we're looking for diameter, let's make him little d. Don't make him big, make him small. There you go, so pi d squared over four, that's our area, so let's go, okay? Now these are in kilonewtons, okay? So to remember what a megapascal is? A megapascal is a newton over millimeters squared. So we're trying to find uh, a stress. It needs to be in these units. So let's convert this guy. Okay, so let's try the first one, tau allowable, okay? Tau allowable is equal to 45 megapascals, which is newtons over millimeters squared, and that is equal to, what is tau equal to? Remember, tau is equal to V over A. Do we know the shear force that's trying to rip the pin in half? Yes, it's that much, right? Okay, so the shear force is 11,350 newtons. You see what I did there? I just multiplied it by 1,000 to get rid of the kilo and put it into newtons, right? Divided by, okay, the area. But remember, this is a double shear. I've got to cut through the pin right there, whoop, and i got to cut through it whoop, right there, right? So it's a double shear, so it's going to be 2 times the area, which is pi times d squared over 4 equals 45. And so what do I have on the bottom? That's millimeters squared. That's newtons over millimeters squared. i got newtons over millimeters squared there. All is good in the world. So when I find D, it's going to be in millimeters, right? So here we go. Let's see if we can do this. So I'm going to take this whole thing on the bottom and multiply it on the other side to get rid of it over there. And so that becomes what? 90 divided by 4 times pi D squared uh, is equal to 11,350. And so D squared is equal to... It's 90 divided by 4, 22.5, right? 90 divided by 4, 22.5, and then 11,350 divided by 22.5 equals 504, and then divided by pi, right? Divided by pi equals 160.57. And then I've got to take the square root of that, and so the D... It's going to be what? Square root, second, square root, second, answer, go. 12.67. 12.67 mm. That's my diameter. So is that the answer? Well, I don't know. i got to go check these two and see what the diameter there is. Because each one of these uh, constraints here is going to give me a different um, value for the diameter. And what am I after? Am I after the one that has the biggest diameter? No. I'm after the one that has 
Yeah, actually, I am, aren't I? I'm out, I'm out the one that has the biggest diameter. Because this one may not be the limiting factor. That one might be the limiting factor. I don't want to exceed it there, right? Because any of these, if the diameter gets bigger, then it's going to handle plenty more of that load, right? That's not going to fail. Okay, so let's talk about bearing stress. The next one, bearing stress in the blue bracket in this bar here, okay? So we'll call that sigma B for bearing. Okay, what's the force on the pin that's doing the bearing? Because think about it this way, okay? Think about it this way. Here's the bracket, okay? The bracket is pushing on the pin, right? The bracket is pushing on the pin. But what's the pin doing? Pushing on the bracket, right? So that's what we gotta do. We gotta solve bearing stress for one, what's the pin doing to the bracket, the blue bracket? And then bearing stress number two is what is the pin doing to the supports that are holding it, okay? So here we go. So the force, same force. Same force trying to mash on the bracket. So 11.35, which I'm just going to say comma, newtons. Again, I'm going to try and get this into megapascals. Divided by the area. So what is the area? Okay, so here he is. So if I was to slice through that, what would I see? I would see something like this. Okay. There's a bracket. There's a bracket. And then here is that that center bar, okay? And so as far as that bar knows, the middle bar, right? The pin, let me draw the pin in a different color. Where's my markers here? Okay, here's my red one. Okay, the pin goes through here, okay? The pin is mashing on the bracket. And what's that shape look like? Well, it looks like this. It's this wide, right, by this thick. It's this rectangle right here. Okay, so this shaded rectangle right there is what's mashing on the bracket. So how big is that rectangle? Well, it's the diameter, right, times the thickness of the bracket, which is eight millimeters. Okay. Do I know the diameter? Nope, that's what I'm looking for. So 8D, or let's make a little d. Ah! Okay, 8D millimeters squared. Solve for D, right? But what's the bearing stress on this side? The bearing stress is 95 megapascals. So 95 newtons over mm squared times 8d m m squared is equal to 11,350, okay, newtons, right, those go away. So, <clears throat> let's see what that is. 11, clear, clear, 11,350 divided by 95 divided by 8, ah, D, for this bearing stress, needs to be no less than 14.93 millimeters. So is the pin big enough here? Nope, needs to be bigger to make sure that I don't have the bearing stress from the bracket. This is the bearing stress from the, from the, um, the bell crank. Let's put bell crank on there. Okay. Okay. So we need to check one more thing, and that is the bearing stress on these little brackets right here, okay? Which are these two little guys over here? Now, what is the pin doing to those little brackets? What is the area that it's mashing on those? Well, it's this right here, okay? It's that one plus this one over here, right? I've got to do both of those. So this one is not the middle one this time. It's just these two guys here that are mashing on the bracket. So what is that area equal to? Well, it's two times the diameter of the bolt, which is this way, right? Diameter times what? The thickness of the little brackets, which is uh, six millimeters each. So 
So there's two of them, six millimeters by the diameter of the bracket, okay? Or, or 12D, right? So here we go. Sigma bearing for the, this is for the support, okay? What's the force? It's still 11.35 or 11,350 newtons. And then what? On the bottom is the area, which is 12D. Okay? And all that's got to be equal to what? 155 megapascals. Okay? And so what? 11,350 divided by 155 equals divided by 12 equals... 6 point D equals 6.10 MMs. Okay, so for the whole system, for every single piece of it to survive, the supports, the bracket, the pin, the whatever, how big does the diameter need to be? To make sure that everybody's okay with that load right there, right? With this 5 kilonewton load on it, then you better make it at least 14.93 millimeters in diameter. And this guy right here, the star guy, star guy, that's your answer this time, okay? So you really got to think about what it is you're looking for. You're looking for the smallest value or you're looking for the biggest value, okay? All right, I hope that kind of clears up what bearing stress is, which is nothing more than sigma stress, normal stress, and then how... You can have one problem do shear stress as well. All right, I hope that, hope that helps, and uh, I'll see you on the next video.